All right, we're back uh, with uh, the breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa and um, indeed election round uh, the ballot 2023 uh, right here. Indeed, um, of course, uh, we've been giving you updates and of course analysis and coverage of Nigeria 2023. Nigeria decides 2023 right here on Plus TV Africa. Uh, my name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Ebopo. Kofi, it's good to have you here. Yes, indeed. Yourself. Yes, indeed. Messi, it's, uh, it's great to be back. <laughs> You're looking immaculate as always. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, indeed. I'm sure our guests who are standing by uh, will agree with that. Uh, um, we have Chris Kende Wando joining us uh, for a discussion as we look at uh, the unfolding um, announcement of results. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning, Messi. All right. Chris Kende Wando, of course, um, is a chartered arbitrator, UK certified chartered arbitrator, um, and he joins us uh, live via Zoom uh, on the breakfast this morning. Um, uh, we've been having results trickling in. Um, of course, we've been looking at um, getting the final results so we know who the president will be. But I think the picture is coming, becoming clearer uh, as the days go by. Uh, uh, Mercy, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, it's been quite interesting. Yesterday, uh, we were awaiting the results of the River State uh, elections uh, for the, the presidential elections. Of course, um, not all the local governments had returned their results. We heard that uh, about two local governments were left um, from River State, but it seems like uh, there was a slight tweak. Um, the APC presidential candidate was leading in, uh, in most of River State, but when uh, the Port Harcourt local government area results came in, the, the, uh, it, the lead of uh, the APC presidential candidate in, in River State um, was, was chopped, was chopped. And uh, the Labour Party's candidate took over, uh, established uh, his first lead, the first time he was in front in River State after winning most of the votes at Port Harcourt City local government area. Um, Peter B. polled 62,451 votes to win that council, leaving uh, PDP's Atiku Abokar with 7,303 votes and uh, the All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu with 5,500 and 62 votes. That's for that Port Harcourt City local government area. Mercy. Um, so with these results, Obi you know, got the lead in only five local government areas, but he overtook Tinubu, who also led River State since the beginning uh, of the coalition with the wins in 12 local government areas. Uh, I'm reading a report here that says uh, Obi Akpo, Ahora West, and Degama are being expelled. I think Degama uh, may have come in. Um, so as it stands, Peter Obi has uh, 163,033 votes to lead Tinubu who polled 140,262 votes, and Atiku got 82,109 votes. Um, of course, uh, what I what hear, you hear from a, a correspondent who I spoke with, who was at the River State Coalition Center yesterday, is that um, they, it took a while, mercy. You know, Port Harcourt is, is, is a big state, uh, but um, most of the people in River State are concentrated in the uh, in the urban centers so you have uh, port harcourt and uh, now there are two local government areas in port harcourt port harcourt city local government area and uh, obi Akpo local government area, which is one of the richest local government areas um, uh, you know in nigeria i think second richest after i don't know whether it's uh, one of the local governments in lagos so um the the INEC headquarters you know INEC coalition center in river city is in port harcourt where you have obi Akpo local government area we have Port Harcourt City local government area. It's called Falga. Um, so, you know, people were wondering um, why you had all the local government areas in River State, even those you have to cross water, you know, to get to a speedboat, sending in their results, but Port Harcourt City local government area and Obiapo local government area had not sent in their results at the time. And also, um, someone asked, asked uh, on a space I was on, a trailer space a couple of nights ago, and um, why most of the violence in River State, political violence, um, ballot box snatching, ballot paper tearing, uh, you know, um, a lot of the violence we've seen, and uh, some of the um, inability of, of, of INEC staff to access the beavers because of password failure. And so we're asking why, uh, why the, it was concentrated in Obiapo and Faga. And I asked, uh, I think, Opunabo and Kotara yesterday on the program what he said. Uh, was that is because of the, the concentration of, of population den density, you know, in, in that part of the, the state. Most of the people, the voting population, they're concentrated in these two local government areas. And so probably the politicians will want to focus 
on those local government areas uh, to be able to get more votes. And you can see just one local government area, um, uh, Mercy, which is a uh, Port Harcourt City local government area, came in last night and Obi took the lead. Okay. With just five local government areas. Mm -hmm. but, but another interesting thing is that the local government chairman, uh, let, let's start from this point, the um, coalition officer for the local government was, had to be brought in by the commissioner of police in River State. There was a sort of a distress call. Uh, she said she couldn't leave where she was because the politicians were, were harassing her. You know, the politicians were uh, harassing her. She said supporters of some political parties were harassing her. So she had to call for um, a, the CP. You know, the CP had to leave the coalition center to go and bring her himself because she said she was under some sort of um, detention. And when she came in, uh, well, the reports we have is that, uh, that the local government chairman, of course, the governor of River State had given a directive, you know, to the local government chairman to to deliver their local government area. So we, we told that the local government chairman of Port Harcourt City local government and his officials, who were not um, accredited to be at the coalition center, the state coalition center, followed them in and they were frantic. They were panicking. They were pacing. In fact, the reporter told me that the local government chairman was shaking. Mm. But know, we, yeah, so, so, so that is what happened, and Obi has taken the lead in, in River State. But, yeah. but just before we talk about, you know, Obi's lead in River State, you know, one of the things that we saw play out yesterday, of course, we're going to be sharing the thoughts of Chris Kende Wandu as to the protests of, uh, you know, the opposition party, uh, the election results. So opposition party yesterday at the coalition center, I mean, shortly after the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, continued the announcement of a result. Don't forget that one result was announced on Saturday, which was a Kitty State result. And so uh, after that, we had, uh, INEC said that there will be a resumption at the coalition center. You know, on uh, the, around 11 o'clock, that was yesterday, which was Monday. And so shortly after that time, uh, party agents, Nigerians as well, on different uh, social media spaces, also online, had protested the result of uh, the uh, that was ongoing at the coalition center, and and that's where we want to share Chris Kende Wando's thoughts as to this uh, development. Now, their concerns was that uh, the process of the entire electoral process was not respected as to the fact that the electoral act of 2022 had stipulated that results will be transmitted via the beavers and would have real-time transmission. However, it felt like a lot of polling units were not uh, you know, using that particular mode of operation. So results were not, in most polling units, transmitted electronically as to what the, elect uh, the Electoral Act had said. There were also different uh, you know, interests to that. We all saw how members of this opposition party uh, worked out of the coalition center at the FCT. Chris Kane, what do you make of this? The opposition party protesting election result at the coalition center. Um, personally, I think um, uh, the I, I make, uh, has lowered the bar as it were um, in this election and uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, compromise on this part uh, because uh, based on the guideline um, the INEC has already ruled that we see that there will be smooth transmission of results where the viewers and that transmission is what INEC is supposed to be written out at the collation center but unfortunately the INEC chairman seems to for whatever reason uh, seems to have other ideas and is trying to do manual collation of results, which led to that protest by most of the political parties yesterday. And then um, some of them walked out, including the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party. Um, there were issues that we are raised, but if this election is going to be as fair and transparent as the INA chairman promised Nigerians, then he has to do the needful. Um, trying to say, oh, no, there's no problem. Whatever I'm reading now, they are reading that here. It's already what we have. And uh, don't forget, as of Sunday, most of the results were not uh, moving into the INEC-IREF. 
And a lot of Nigerians raised eyebrow about that. Um, I know chairman didn't say anything about it when he inaugurated the and opened the collection center. Um, it was not until so much there's so many people started crying out about this that I neck later in the night issued a press statement that it was having problem with the server, but that they are trying to do something about it. So um, what the INEC chairman is doing for me uh, is compromising this, this system and making it looks doesn't make it look transparent enough, and that in this, uh, is uh, an issue as it were. Uh, but the question we ask ourselves now between the, the, the devil and the deep sea, which one do we go for? Are we going to stop the election, uh, collection of the results until INEC uh, uploads most of this result into the server? and display it uh, 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 as required so that the political parties can follow, can follow on or should they go ahead with the coalition. And you saw the, the statement by former president, Ulusha Gwambasanjo, yesterday on the issue. And they provide some solutions to that. Um, I think I should try to be as transparent as it were so that this election, which seems already compromised, um, People will start doubting the, the uh, Chris, the but the results. bone of contention is not uh, as to, you know, we, we know the bone of contention, whether the process should continue because uh, those who were protesting, we saw the likes of Dino Milai, we saw other party agents. Apart from that, you also had several protests outside of the coalition center. Now, what they're asking is that you can't continue with the process. The elections or the result were to be transmitted at the polling unit. But saying that we're waiting for them to upload the result, which means uh, after, I mean, election, how many hours after the elections then that election, uh, results should be transmitted? According to the Electoral Act of 2022, that the results will be uploaded. It will be real time at the polling unit, not when you get out of the polling unit to the ward and you know get to the state center before all of this is uploaded. So. Uh, I'd like to ask you, do you think that the arguments that the opposition and Nigerians are having are valid? Should the coalition continue? Uh, some persons have made reference to the fact that uh, INEC has a constitutional obligation to conduct the elections, and so the process should continue because there, it's within their discretion to continue it, and then maybe the people should face the tribunal. I said that this process to me is already compromised. And what the political parties are saying is the right thing. But don't forget that INEC also has the right to either continue, they are the one that determines, or the INEC chairman has the power to either continue the relation or listen to them. And so for me, it was even more intriguing that apart from APC, that was urging the uh, INEC to continue with the coalition. Every other political party that spoke yes, we are against it and asking the chairman. But the chairman seems to agree with the APC, and that is why it's doing what. But as I said, this election will seem compromised if INEC does not follow its own rule of making sure that those transmit. Because if you check, uh, uh, if you check through those uh, results, and the, the political process are saying, as you are reading out, we are, we are checking online to see what you are reading at, whether it's the same thing that our own agents at the police station, uh, police booth, and at the local government, uh, collection centers, and rest of them. It's bad. Don't forget what they are, what the NH chairman, um, through the various reasons given, is, um, is just a roundup figure of the voting in the states. They just call the, um, um, results in the states. Um, party by party and sign off on it. But the political parties said that as they are calling that they want to make sure that they are following through the... And I'm finding... I'm, I'm wondering why INEC is finding it difficult to do this because they already did it in Anambra. They did it in uh, uh, Oshun, Ekiti. So why is it that INEC is finding it difficult to do that nationally? Don't forget what happened, that most Nigerians didn't... Most of those police stations also have issues having this um, uh, problem of transmitting these results to the BIVAS, that is INEC officials. People finish voting as late as it were, and we are waiting for these results to be transmitted via uh, BIVAS 
to the central server, and most of the time, the, the high net official will tell you that the server is down. The rest of is where they transmitted that of the National Assembly. When it comes to the presidential uh, resource, they say there's no server, there's a problem. I, I, as I was saying in another station yesterday, my, 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 my village is a classical example where people voted in four polling centers and they waited till about 9 p.m. Three of those police centers couldn't have their result uploaded through the uh, through beavers and transmitted to the central server. So, and that is the same thing that happened. So, I personally, if you ask me, I would just uh, uh, believe and I would have just ask and uh, to just sit back and find out where the problem is coming from. It's better that we solve this issue once and for all, that continue to go this same route, that at the end of it all, they bring um, to question the credibility of the results that have been uh, telling the Nigerians, which is what our politicians have learned to do. If you make any complaint, they said, let the results uh, be created and announced. Any agreed political person should go to the court because they know they will get their way in court. We cannot continue waiting for the court every time and say, it is wrong for you to say people should wait, let the system finish if you are aggrieved. Most often than not, we realize that they don't even get justice at this court. So it is better we get it right rather than we spend over 300 billion for this election. That was the taxpayers' money that um, INEC was given to conduct this election. What are we talking about? How are they not getting it right? Very baffling to me. Oh. All right, Chris, very interesting. Um... I mean, we all were witness to, and I, I don't know if we can roll the, the tape, but we all were witness to uh, the actions of uh, Dino Melaye, um, the man that some would like to call the dinosaur, uh, who refused to be cowed, refused to sit down, and vehemently continued to protest um, the Kiti election results, which came in, um, <laughs> and if, it was clear for everyone to see that the number of uh, those who voted were more than the number of those who were accredited. In other words, there was overvoting. Um, and uh, the INEC chairman had a simple logic. What was his logic? His logic was that the process for collation was in four stages, or is in four stages. At the world level, where all the polling unit you know, results are brought in, they collate all of them. At the local government level, where they collate all the world uh, um, uh, results, at the state level, where they collate all the local government results, and then at the national level, where all the state results are collated. Now, he said every objection, every protest for the results ought to have been done at the polling unit before the result was sent back to the state uh, to look to the ward. And then if they have problems at the ward, because they're collating the polling unit results there, they can, the party agents can, can lodge their protest there. You know? um, so, so once those are signed, it may be difficult for the state um, uh, you know, coalition officer to start going back to unit by unit by unit. And if it's signed in the state, it may be difficult for the uh, national coalition officer, which who is the, the INEC chairman, or the national returning officer, rather, who is the INEC chairman, to, to uh, agree that they will start going you know, to the result state unit by unit, you know, for all the units in the country. So he says if they start that, they won't leave there. So what, what, what do you say to this, you know, that the protest should be at the unit level, ward level, even maybe state level. Well, to let it, it, yes, I agree with him, but even at that, if you protest at the ward level and local government at state level, and they did not listen to you, you also have opportunity of, of also expressing yourself at the national level. Um, the uh, the energy man is the national, the coordinating officer for the national election which is the presidential election um don't forget that we also had some other election on saturday that of the house of representatives and the senate which were dealt with at the senatorial level but if there are discrepancies that were um, raised then the um, national chairman of INEC ought also to look at it but he said something yesterday uh, after those complaints, that he has gone through the result, and the result that is being read out was exactly what the uh, uh, the agent signed. That every agent signed that uh, result, and uh, there is no single uh, voting in that result. So it's between him and the political parties. If political parties have evidence that there was over voting, and the result that were voted, then it is for them to be able to bring it to the fore for Nigerians to see. Um, then talking about Dino Malaya's protest, 
every Nigerian have a right to protest in as much as it's not violent. Um, he was protesting that his party was being uh, undermined in the process of the um, collection of the result. He has the right. The only issue there is that if he's not doing it, he's doing it in a manner that we bring some kind of distribute or bring some kind of insecurity challenges to those at the listing. But it's a right that he has under the law that is rightly um, given under the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria. Oh. And well, I think well, um, he made that yeah. So, but Chris, if you look at you know the, uh, some of the concerns of Nigerians, not just those who were at the coalition center, these are party agents. The major crux for the conversation is the uh, mode of transmission of results. Results were to be transmitted electronically. Well, they were asking, how were these results transmitted? Because there were several reports as well, which were very evident that results were not transmitted at the polling unit, which prior to this time, was the reason for the introduction of the beavers. So when you allowed the space from the polling unit, there were several complaints uh, that why this polling unit couldn't update or upload these results. And then so uh, within all of that gap and the space that you have, anything could have happened. And we have seen pictures of results being doctored and mutilation, however, on the papers. So. Um, there are also, you know, queries as to elections not happening in several places due to violence in, in some places. Uh, the elections didn't really happen because of insecurity issues. Uh, should INEC not pay attention? Is, is it not within the powers of INEC to decide that these issues should be paid attention to rather than continuing with the coalition of the results? Without repeating myself, I think this issue has been addressed by most of the things I said earlier. I even gave the instance of my village where results would not be transmitted. So, and I've said it that INE, uh, the national chairman of INE, should be able to sit back and be able to look at most of these challenges, which he himself and his, his commission have agreed they have. When they talked about the issue of the server and that, um, that they're having some glitches here and there, which uh, as of today, I have not gone there. Uh, I was following. We are supposed to have about um, the total polling uh, units. Uh, it's supposed to be about 176,000 or thereabouts. It's 176,000. I doubt whether INEC has concluded up to 66,000 uh, or uh, thereabouts the last time I checked into the server. The first thing remains that if INEC said that that the result will be transmitted, transmitted, and that the result will be displaced in transmitted to the servers, and it will be displaced for political party and Nigerians to see as the result in. They cannot go back. I saw the press, you don't, you don't also forget that there have been a series of press conferences and counter press conferences. The PDP had a press conference yesterday, which is a, um, a communication. Uh, uh, Head of communications and spokespersons led by um, Dele Momodu. After that, the uh, APC also quickly came and they also had the uh, that was also headed by Dela Alake, where there were accusation and counter accusations. Out of the APC, we are saying that uh, it's not compulsory that the INEC must uh, display uh, those uh, results that we are transmitted to the server. There's nothing that is. Uh, Professor Kiyamu actually was saying that during the conference. But from all intents and purposes, we are holding INEC to his words that this uh, result will be transmitted um, electronically and that everybody will be able to go to the portal and see what is like. So if he's failing in his promises, then there is, a, 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 to us as Nigerians, um, there's a lot of um, compromising going on. And that in itself, the International Committee. Um, International observers have already started issuing um, statements on the election. I'm sure you must have seen that of ECOWAS. You have seen that of EU. You have seen that of uh, um, NDI, uh, NDI and IRA, which is uh, um, observers of, from the United States. And you've seen some of the things that they, they have altered the, to a large extent the credibility of INEC and what it did on Saturday. That in itself to me. Is a terrible, uh, a terrible one. But I can still do myself by making sure that it does the right thing. 
Okay, uh, uh, Chris Kenny Wando, of course, everything has to be done, you know, according to law. And um, the black and white, I mean, you're very aware, is very important. Uh, we'll, we'll look at some of these before we move on to look at um, uh, the next uh, uh, focus on this discussion. I'm glad to say we're joined by uh, a legal practitioner. Um, uh, Paul Ejime is also on, on Zoom. He is, um, he joins his life in Lagos. Uh, uh, Paul Ejime, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, little correction, I'm not a legal practitioner. I'm a global affairs analyst. All right. Apologies. So thank you for having me. Apologies. Uh, working with what we are told. <laughs> All right. Um, no problem. Yes. So, so before we get into the shift of uh, imbalance of power uh, in legal state, uh, what it seems to be happening, um, what are your thoughts on, on I mean, the, the legal angle, uh, we look at the, the Electoral Act 2022 as amended, and the guidelines, or regulations and guidelines for the conduct of ele elections, which is, was a document released by INEC um, in, in June 2022, which, which was for this election and for subsequent election, elections. The parties are saying that the, the political, the uh, electoral umpire, INEC must look into their complaints, their, the issues, uh, matters arising, the issues they have with results coming in from different states. Um, I mean, one plus one is equal to two. That's very clear. But when um, one plus one, it becomes three, uh, and then you accept it, then, the, it, I mean, it could be questioned. But the INEC chairman is saying, this is not the place for that. You had four different stages. There are three stages before now. The world level uh, collation, where the uh, RA slash, uh, uh, you know, world collation officer could have been you know, shown those issues. And then the local government coalition and then the, the state coalition centers, we cannot go into individual itinerant results from units here at the National Coalition Center, is what the INEC chairman has been saying. Um, I, I'd like to draw your attention very quickly to, to certain provisions of, of uh, the Electoral Act, and then you tell me what you think about it. Um, it, it, it sub, sub section 60, uh, uh, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act 2022, as amended, says that the presiding officer after counting the votes at the poll, at the polling unit, shall enter the votes scored by each candidate in form, in a form to be prescribed by the commission. Of course, you know that, that, what that form is by now. Uh, it says the form shall be stamped and signed by the presiding officer and countersigned uh, by the candidates or their polling agents where available at the polling unit. Sub 3 says the presiding officer shall give um, the polling agents and the police officer where available a copy each of the completed forms, uh, which after it has been duly signed, you know, and all that, um, it says that the presiding officer shall count and announce the result at the polling unit. Uh, and five says the presiding officer shall transfer uh, the results, including total number of accredited voters and results of the ballot in a manner as prescribed by the commission. Okay, so, so um, it also has prescription of um, penalty for any presiding officer that um, refuses to do this. Um, when, when the result is announced or not announced at the polling unit, for, for certain reasons, or announced. And then what comes out later uh, is, is different. What remedies do the parties have? Okay, before we go into those remedies, let me here say that um, I'm going to fall back on my um, uh, experience and then uh, skill as a communication expert and somebody a consultant on um, elections i've uh, observed um, many elections in in, um, in africa and can tell you that you have all well, this is what you're uh, mentioning now it's one of what they call the legal um you know normative uh, framework the legal framework for the election it has the constitution it has the electoral laws and then the guidelines and then when where if anyone that um, uh, if all the two the electoral law and the um, guidelines when they are inconsistent with the constitution of course the constitution will have um, uh, precedence but here what we are talking let me say that what has happened and i'm breaking it down for the ordinary uh, uh, folks because that is what um, the managing expectation the point is that if i, I make and if, to be fair to them, they have, um, you know, made some progress on um, technological development by bringing these beavers, you know, by modal um, voter accreditation. Remember, it used to be a card reader, and then it used to be other things. But here, it is introduction of technology, and then what the law, they amended the act, uh, Electoral Act 2022 20, uh, said, 
about electro, you know, transmission of um, electronic transmission of the result. I think that is where the problem lies. And then each uh, party, depending on where you are, they are now taking sides. And then INEC has also come to do, the chairman said he was going ahead. What has happened is that technology has failed um, INEC. And then we need to be clear on that. But the other thing is that they have also not covered themselves in glory in the way they have communicated the challenges they are having. They only came out with the um, uh, statement, I think, almost 24 hours after. But for a, a commission that in Anambra, in um, Oshu, and um, I think, where is it, um, Ondo or Ikiti, they were able to upload this, this uh, IREF. IREF refers to um, the um, uh, INEC, um, you know, uh, uh, resort viewing portal. And that is for the common man to show real time that as soon as this is completed from the uh, polling units, you know, it will, everybody you have uh, voted, the voters will see the, um, uh, what has happened. You hear parties uh, telling their, their, their followers or supporters to remain there and make sure that their votes count. And then when they remain there, their party agents will also now see what the ele um, ele uh, election uh, agents are doing, and then if it will be very open and transparent. Then they sign. When As soon as they sign up to this, it will now be uploaded to the INEC uh, uh, server. I think that is where the, the challenge comes. And then post, uh, pasted on the wall of um, the polling units. So this, this is, you know, this was introduced to avoid the previous experience where in hand carrying some of these uh, results, something might happen between the um, building units and the ward, and then from the ward to the state, and then the collection center, and then from the state, before you now get to the uh, national collection, if, it is, if we are talking about the presidential. But for the other ones, I think uh, they are uh, settled at the state level. So, but it is the each the problem of not communicating. They have done so, but I think they have come out uh, rather late in the day. And when you leave that kind of um, uh, delay, it creates suspicion, it creates anxiety. And then everybody begins to uh, talk about, and here, perception. Remember, and remember the, the background to that. You had, so you saw some voter intimidation, you saw some vandalism, you saw voter suppression, you saw some violence all over in some places. But mark you, these were the things that were played up by the media. I think the social media um, played a part here by actually um, showcasing the negative. Otherwise, I think there were areas where the elections were held peacefully, but um, what uh, bad news travels, uh, that is the one that everybody is uh, concentrating on. I think uh, this the, could have been avoided. These uh, parties working out could have been avoided. If, for instance, before announcement and knowing that they had this challenge, um, INEC could have called the political parties. They have so many platforms that they use to say, listen, uh, they only uh, how many of them? Eight, uh, Eighteen of them, and all the social, and also get social, um, uh, uh, civil society, all the state, major stakeholders, the security. Everybody, I say, listen, this is the challenge we have, and we could not upload this because of what. So the the statement they issued the uh, 24 hours could have come in much earlier, maybe by six. Because what happened in the previous time was that by 10 o'clock after uh, polling had ended, um, in those um, uh, states that I mentioned, by 10 o'clock, you know, results had started coming up on that um, uh, the portal. But technology has, um, you know, it can fail. And so if it failed at INEC, they should also come out and be very frank Okay. Very sincere uh, and my... transparent with uh, with uh, Nigerians to say this is what instead of um, you know the way it has turned out and this way uh, my... uh, people now make all, all sorts of uh, permutations and allegations. Yes, please go ahead.
Well, uh, just before I delve into you know the issue at hand, which is the shift of a balance of power uh, in Lagos right here, is that I mean, just maybe, at what point should this polling unit agents or the people make complaints? A lot of persons took to uh, social media to uh, put out the results from the polling units because they had a right to take these pictures. And then we see uh, the results. Some of them were mutilated. You could see the tipex that were being used, all of the mutilations, cancelling, and all of that. And you know what that means if you're writing as a student in an examination hall, when you get into all of that, then it means that you made a mistake or, you know, there's something wrong, there's something you're trying to correct. And that's why there's a lot of cancellation on your paper. We have seen that already. So at what point should they have protested? Don't you think that these people protested uh, because they, they knew they were on national television and they could say that. There are several reports where people were intimidated at gunpoint, agents, you know, to sign this result. So, I mean, could it have been at that point where you had a gun to your head? Would you be saying a yes or a no? It depends on the individual. Who wants to die? But uh, just before you answer that, because I probably might not have time to go through all of that, let's look at what has happened. Power has shifted from what it used to be. The APC has been very dominant of Lagos State over time. I mean, you almost want to look at it from 1999. Now, from 2015, look at the presidential election. The president, Muhammad Buhari, at the time pulled 792 votes, uh, 460, 700,000, uh, 792,460 uh, votes to emerge the winner in that election where Jonathan had contested. And then you move uh, fast forward to 2019, his re-election bid. He had 3 million votes, you know, to win uh, his closely uh, rival or his close rival, which is Atiku Abubakar. And that's a different story in 2023. So I'd like you to speak to the fact that uh, there seemed to be a shift from what it used to be, the dominance of the APC over the years in Lagos State, you know, to Labour Party. Who would have thought about that? Well, that is the dynamics of uh, politics. And then it is good for Nigeria. And then the fact that, and well, at, okay, let's say that uh, perhaps it was not expected uh, that an outside party, well, considered an outsider, will show, make such a strong uh, show in, in Lagos. Lagos state that, uh, you, like you said, is the dominant, um, the, the, the stronghold of uh, of the um, APC, um, what happened? If you go back to the campaign, you know, not the campaign registration uh, era, that the youths have woken up, and also the fact that they are challenging the uh, establishment. And I will tell you, and I, I think everybody knows, is very clear. Unless who are those who are trying to pretend that. Nigerians are now asking for change. They are looking for a, a new, you know, breath of life, freshness, newness, because they are, many people are tired, many people are, you know, uh, uh, disenchanted with the system. Uh, the uh, APC government that promised a lot uh, in, ten, in eight years has actually been shot on the delivery of what they promised. Insecurity is still there. Economic hardship is still there. Unemployment is there. Inflation is rising. And then to top it all up, you saw the problem of a cash crunch. Uh, you, are all, you know, just on the eve of the election because of the policy, the APC policy. APC is in government. No matter how any one of them would try to uh, distance themselves from it, it is an APC government that is empowered and brought that policy that put Nigerians into uh, uh, difficulty. Whether it could have been done earlier or the, for all the good uh, intentions, it didn't help matters. And then the fact that ransoms, uh, kidnapping for ransoms still going on, killings by Boko Haram, for instance, during the election, Boko Haram still has struck, you know, throwing mortar in uh, Boronu um, uh, in, in Boronu State. And then on gunmen were all over the place in the east and everywhere. And then headers, uh, um, uh, uh, who are the uh, headers and agriculturists, uh, uh, farmers, uh, crisis. So it's been, I think, the, 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 what happened in Lagos, which for many people is actually in, in sports, you call it an upset. 
is is um, uh, what you call a referendum on the establishment on the party in power that they are saying now we cannot continue to do this uh, uh, it can't be business as usual and i keep i know in some places where i have talked i used to you know they may say well his labor party is um, their uh, candidate but i'm saying that it is a protest from a kind of combination a protest against the establishment about what is happening and then the fact that people are saying i saw for instance a voter who was injured in lagos a lady and then had a, a cut on, on you know on her face and with blood dripping she got um, treated and they say also went back to go and cast her, her vote and when she, she they asked her he said she said even if the preferred candidate didn't win that she wanted to exercise them uh, have, you know, uh, civic uh, uh, responsibility. Right. I think Nigerians were determined. They are, and that is why this uh, passion is what has, you know, uh, uh, now uh, moved into the, the fact that they have not seen the results for which most of them uh, stood in the rain, most of them sacrificed. Okay, uh, and Papa, they are th thank you very much. Just, just very quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on, on this? Um, you know, you know, seeming uh, shift in the balance of power in Lagos. Uh, I mean, the Keja is the home local government area of uh, the APC presidential candidate. I mean, APC has held Lagos on lockdown for, for many years. Though, if you take a look at the results when Obasanjo was president, and uh, maybe after that, uh, an election or two after that, it wasn't always the case that the AD then, or the AC, was uh, dominating Lagos. Um, so, so do you think that uh, maybe this is just the way it has been? It's just that um, people weren't uh, conf confident to come out to to oppose the APC or the AD, ACN at the time. But uh, it's been the case that, for instance, PDP had some good votes in Lagos in, in 99 and 2003. In 2003, sorry. Is that for me? Yes, Chris Kenewano, please, yes. Yes, um, let's uh, let's get some parts right. This wasn't the first time that the ruling party in Lagos lost the presidential election, as has already said. At a point, I think uh, the PDP also uh, won the presidential election in Lagos State, and although they lost, the, the ruling party in Lagos um, won the governorship. So this is not the first time. This is probably the second time. Um, but the difference is that you are looking at an outside party. Finally, it has always been a PDP, a PC, a PCN, a AT since 1999. So you now have what you call a third, um, it became a, a three horse race or four horse race in Lagos, but it became more of three horse race. And um, um, people who came out and voted. And um, personally, I felt that. Even for the disruption and intimidation that went into that election, probably you could, the margin could have been much, but it's just uh, about 9,000, but it is what it was. And um, the Labour Party that was not expected to make any inroads into the Lego, uh, politics in the Lagos were able to come out. And when you look at strategy, some of the local government that was won by the Labour Party, you will see the level of dominance. For instance, Ali Mosho is the biggest local government in Lagos State. And that is where APs are targeted put most of the time. Uh, what comes of Ali Mosho is about three local government put together when you look at the, their votes every time. But Labour Party won Ali Mosho, I think with about um, 71,000 votes or thereabouts, which was heavy. The Labour Party also won in the state capital of Ikeja. The one in Ikeja, the one in Shumulu, Kushofe, Ojo, and some other places that ordinarily you have expected. So what we are saying is that uh, there's a paradigm shift, sort of, in the perception of the politics in, in Lagos State. And I also attribute this, this to the youth. The youth came out massive. You see what has been going on in social media prior to this election. Um, we had a said that they're going to come out and put. But um, 
uh, against all prediction, um, the Labour Party won. So it is only a warning to most of the major parties, the PDP and the APC, that, um, that, is, that we are seeing some shift. If you see what is, the Labour Party is also doing well in the Southeast. The um, Labour Party has won in a state like um, even South South, uh, crossover from the report that we have seen. Uh, traditional areas as well as the do state, the result is out. Um, we know of that um, as announced by the REC in a do state. Um, Labour Party won in Edo State and so some other states. So it is um, a, a, a real shift. Um, now, going to, even if they don't win the presidential election this year, the fact is that uh, they'll be able to make some statements and they'll be put that on to the next election. But coming back to a shift of power in Vegas, I'm still looking at, I'm still waiting to see what will happen at the governorship and House of Assembly election next week um, on the on the 11th of march well, what, what, what do you think what do you think will happen now now we've, we've taken us there <laughs> what what do you expect will happen um some people feel that no, no. yeah some people feel that especially supporters of opposition parties in lagos state that um the election was rigged um that uh, it, it was simply a case of lose the battle but win the war in other words uh, give labor party a bit of you know the win but uh, by slim margin so you can make up the numbers get a 25 percent in legal state and get a good number enough to to win the national vote you know fulfilling section 137 sub section 2a uh, of the uh, constitution of the republic of Nigeria. so so um we saw widespread reports of widespread um voter intimidation voter suppression uh ballot boxes ballot boxes were snatched uh burnt torn thrown on roofs, people were chased, beaten. Um, I know that uh, Paul Jimmy would say it's social media frenzy, but this is a real situation. We didn't even see ev we didn't even see everything. People died. Um so so are you are you confident um that the will of the people it will prevail in the governorship election? Your first question, um who will win? I don't know who will win. But I can tell you that it's just too close to Paul as they say in politics. Um, if you experience some violence during the presidential, expect that expect there will be more during the governorship election in Lagos State because more will be at stake on on the eleventh, uh, which is why we are calling on security agencies to really up their antics and be able to make sure that everywhere every nook and cranny of um, of Lagos State is well protected. I saw a lot of skirmishes here and there. And the police will not be able to do any job. But you have to ask yourself, what could that police have? You don't forget, only one policeman was stationed at each of the polling units, and they were not armed. It was, it, it was. I said that you know they have about four rings. The first rings are the ones that um, the the ones that carry arms, and they move around the area, local government. The second ring also, but the last ring, which is the first ring. No single security operative is expected to carry a gun. Even the, uh, the worst they can do, worst case scenario, is a party. So when you have a policeman policing about, let's say, there's a situation where we have about 100 people at a police station, you have a police station, which is, to me was very, very cool. But let us even put it at 200. And you have a policeman or a woman, at that time, a woman that is there standing, and there are crises. What do you expect to uh, okay. refer to what? Well, well, I mean, just quickly, uh, uh, Chris, you know, I probably take you on that, but you know, let's leave, yes. you know, let's let's leave that part. Whether it's a woman, because uh, I don't understand the rationale behind having four hundred thousand police officers to please eighty-seven million persons who will probably turn out, even if you don't have 87, 80 million, 60 million. Are you, are you accusing Chris of, of, of no. gender bias? Yes. I mean, no, do those but, statistics. But. So it has nothing to do, my point here is, that's why I said I won't take him on that. Uh, it has nothing to do whether it's a woman or not. The thing is, if you look at the calculation, it doesn't suit. How do you have 400,000 uh, security personnel that have been deployed to please 87 million, please, I mean, uh, voters? So let's even say 87 will not turn out. You have 80 or 60. Do the statistics. How many persons or how many police officers would you have? There are reports that some polling units really didn't have a presence of a single officer. And so the people had to take it upon themselves to defend the territory yeah. and defend yeah. their vote. Mercy. But Chris, Chris, you remember I said I can't yes. take you on that because of time. 
<laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure we can have yeah. this conversation, yeah. you know, some other time quickly because yes, let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. Let's let's wrap up with that. Quickly. All right. Um, Whether a policeman or a woman, they are policemen. Just as you say in journalism, there is no there is no man or woman in journalism. We are all press men. The same thing with the police. What I'm telling you is there are situations where even we, we, we are gender sensitive. And whether I will that or not, I'm leaning out what, what, what the statement I'm giving, what I'm saying now, is the statement that I saw from the spokesperson of Lagos State uh, Police Command, Benjamin. So, so in, in other words, it, it's like so, because you know, a woman was posted. No, he, he, no, he was I mean, using an example. No, but, but, but that example, no, I mean, if you no, say me, mercy, in a, mercy, in a case mercy, where Kofi, mercy, Kofi, mercy. Kofi see, I, I'm just I, I'm respond. not trying to be. No, he was saying he could have said policeman. He, he couldn't have said. He said in a case it, where you have a woman being posted. Now it's already looking no, he like said it's police because police it's woman. a woman. Did, of course, that's, woman what, that's what it is. Okay. So it's looking like it's because it's a police woman, and so because it's a woman, then nothing can be done. Well, I, I think. He, I the, think he the, said the, the he said police, police here, woman. No, that's what he said. In a yes, case where you have which a police is, woman, it, it could be a policeman or police woman. The, the not, point here is, it's not. Um, how many officers do we have? Do we have enough officers to police? Just like the state. It's the same thing that happened with the election. A lot of people were excited that you have 400,000 mm. police uh, mm -hmm. security personnel who were deployed. Yes. But if you look at the ratio of number, the number of registered voters who will be turning out, I mean, how do you yeah, divide? I, I agree with you. I think what you're saying um, to, to Chris K. Nwando is that a policewoman can equally stand their ground and do a good job like the policemen. And um, there should be no discrimination in terms of uh, facing political thugs, facing uh, armed thugs, you know, facing uh, bad bad boys between police women and policemen, they're both equally equipped to 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 fight. The number you, that's, that's you, you can't have one policeman. Yes, you so, know, so, so policing so a unit of over how many thousand? Even if you have uh, a police, a female police officer at a particular polling uh, unit or polling uh, center, that she has the capacity, the capability um, to 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 stand her ground. You know, in the face of of thuggery, she can take them on. Is what you're trying to tell Chris. And Chris, I think you. You can understand that. He's already said he's um, gender sensitive. Let's leave it at that. Um, let's leave it at that. But I always um, want to just ask a quick question um, to uh, Ejime, Paul Ejime, and then to Chris to, to round off what we're talking about. Lagos State had uh, um, 7.06 million registered voters at the end of the continuous voter registration exercise, the total number of voters. To lead the country, to lead the country in terms of registered voters, ahead of Kano in second place, River State in third place, and Katsina State in fourth place. These are, are part of the eight, sorry, uh, kingmaker states, I call them, because they have uh, over three million vote, voters, registered voters. And we see that in keeping to uh, recent um, you know, uh, patterns, mm -hmm. only 1.347 million registered voters came out to vote. Now, I asked Lagosians last week, why do we have Lagos State lagging behind Kano? And Katsina State, let's talk, talk about River State, because if I talk about River State now, I may not be a good journalist. Um, and <laughs> what, what a lot of respondents told me was that because of voter intimidation and suppression, they didn't come out to vote, but that this year will be different. Sir, people came into the country from outside. I know them. California, London, um, 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 Florida, different parts of the country. And when they came, they didn't come to vote alone. Some even didn't come to vote. They came to mobilize hundreds of people. They had hundreds to their mobilized to go vote for um, one political party or the other. You know, what do you think happened? From 7.06 we've seen Lagos lagging behind other states with um, the number of people who came out to vote. Is this a reflection in your, in, your, in your analysis or your opinion of the fact that people didn't come out to vote or that we, we're not seeing the real result in front of us? A combination of uh, the factors. One is the fact that um, many perhaps were afraid, you know, given the security, uh, 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 you know, underpinning. Uh, the other is also that technology has played a, a huge part. You know, in those days, it was easy for somebody to walk to, towards the answer. Once you know that this is the number of people that were registered, then there could be thumb printing, you know, at random to make up the number. But here, we have now a gatekeeper in Beavers that uh, will only record 
those who have been accredited. So that period of uh, massive, um, you know, um, it's not going to happen again. And that is one of the uh, takeaways from um, uh, the incremental improvement in the um, in our electoral system. So it's a combination. And also let me, when we're talking about power shift, let us also talk about the fact that um, it is not unlikely that many people were, uh, they took things for granted. The um, uh, ruling party, for instance, their supporters thought that it was going to be just um, uh, a rollover. But um, leaving their initiative to those um, the so-called outsiders who mobilized and the youth came out. So, one, the low turnout is across. I, I think it's everywhere. In some places, you have 2 million registered, but not up to 500,000 uh, 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 voted in some states that have been declared. So it is one, because of insecurity is one of them, and the fact that uh, people were afraid, you know, violence and all that. But mainly, mainly, it is down to the fact that um, you could no longer uh, come and um, uh, just... Uh, um, uh, votes or use what they use. they used to call it uh, incident uh, form. If you didn't, if uh, you didn't, they couldn't uh, capture you on um, the card reader or whatever. They gave you form to so Bivaks uh, has reduced that kind of uh, massive. Okay. Um, okay. You know. Right. Uh, 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 Popo, you was, say, thank uh, you very, very quickly forced. because of time. Yes. Yeah, I, I will take your final thought on this from Chris. The the wide gap in number of registered voters versus those who came out uh, to, to vote. Chris, very briefly, your, your thoughts on this. Well, um, you talk about Kano. When you talk about Kano and the North, there are a lot of underage voting. And I'm sure you must have noticed that recently. Uh, we are kids of uh, about seven years, five years. We are voting. That is where you have, that's where you're having that large turnout in some part of the North, that even a commission of police came out when he was asked why did they allow that is when uh, you cannot tell the age of a, a person by a, by his uh, by his frame and uh, so that is that for me um, especially when you are comparing a place like Kano with Lagos then there is also some level of um, total apathy um, because of challenges this year we thought that it had been so much but don't forget that few weeks and few days some Nigerians have been having serious challenges on the issue of Naira and the rest of them. So there's a lot of disenchantment on part of people uh, to come and exercise their... That in itself, I thought, would have changed them, proved them to, to come out and vote. But there's some level of apathy. Then also the screaming of security. They saw what happened the last time when they voted in Lagos. Uh, some people were wounded, injured. And but, 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 but Chris, Chris, so Chris, Chris, I'm sorry careful. to interrupt you, Chris. Mm -hmm. People went out to vote. People a did. lot of people. I don't know what you two are talking about. You're looking for reasons to explain. Oh, people no, no, no. trained me, this not, year no, no, from no, all no, parties. No, no, APC. They were. I, I no, work on radio. I I, I also do work no, on radio, Chris. You know. I talk to people no, every no, night. No, APC supporters. No, they were no, rallying no, themselves no, the night before the election. PDB supporters were no, rallying no, themselves. And now we have more parties no, that that seem to have no, a chance. No, no, and look no, at no, the, no, the hundreds no, of people, no, thousands. No, Chris, no, sorry. No, who trooped out all over the state, APC, PDP, ALP, NMP, to go register. They wanted this, this PVC. Tell me, all of a sudden they woke up because of Naira on that day and said, after struggling all this while to go and register, I won't go out to vote. Chris, it doesn't add up. Tell me another story. I mean, Chris, Tell me another I mean, story, Chris, Chris. Just before, I'm, Chris, Chris. I'm, looking, I'm telling you the challenges. Chris, I'm the please, Chris, some of Chris, who some went of out to vote in their yeah. numbers? I mean, a lot of first-time voters. They were, they were reports. They were stopped taking shots themselves. Mm -hmm. I've never voted before. It's my first time. Chris, Chris. That's what they said. Chris, Chris uh, I mean, just before you add in, uh, I mean, just to add to that, really, to be very honest, we need to, because every other time we talk about people... Uh, voter apathy. We understand that that has been one thing that has been ongoing. But you see, prior to 2023, it's a good thing that we're here, and before the elections that have passed, there's been a lot of, um, you know, introduction, innovation, campaign awareness that has gone up. And we can say that the uh, number of persons who turned out to vote uh, was quite impressive. And for a lot of persons who didn't vote, it was not because they were not willing.
Now, I know a lot of people, including blood relatives very close, who went to their polling units, but because of the uh, uh, you know, thuggery activity that went on, where people walked into the polling unit, uh, started shooting randomly. People had to, you know, think about no, their no, lives. We, we don't have too much so time. So I, I know a lot of people who didn't vote. <laughs> we have there are a lot of persons who we'll even went every other time to the INEC office to get their PVCs. They were told that they couldn't get it. No, but, but, Escalate but people, and de-escalate. People had, had PVCs. <laughs> so so had yeah, PVCs. there were a lot of people who didn't get their PVCs. I, not I because people. they didn't want to vote. <laughs> now, no, Kofi, can Chris I say that? Um, <laughs> let me say that. This there were a lot of people. You don't mean gender sensitive. No, no, I'm not saying. My point is, there were a lot of people. So as much as we want to say there were a lot of people who didn't want to vote. There are also other issues. So we maybe we need to declassify the issue of voter apathy. We, maybe we need to break it down and put it in Messi, different we, we, have, we have to go. We have to go. Honestly, um, because... Um, um, we, we have to go, Mercy. It, it, it's something we, 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 uh, we have to get our guests back to talk about again. But she said it, that, that uh, you know, she has an experience. Somebody was chased away. But, but Chris Kennewando and uh, Paul Ejime, we're gl gl glad to have had you. Um, uh, and of course, uh, we'll look forward to more, co more conversations, engagement as the results keep trickling in. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Paul Ejime um, you. and Christian Wandu Esquire. Thank right. you. Appreciate your time. We'll take a break now. Um, <laughs> when we come back, we'll look at um, you know some of the reports by observers. Uh, we have two of them joining us, one from Port Harcourt, one from Abuja, um, uh, of the election 2023, what they observe, because uh, I mean, our observer is meant to observe, right? So look at that when we come back. Please stay with us. <laughs>